He was so, you know, and, and Murray Thompson very proud of Pat Up Singh. Pat Up Singh is doing the job. He's getting out there and doing it. I wonder if, if he's holding back at all. I don't know if, if he is, he's, he's doing it well. You yeah. know what I mean? And here we go, he, round five. He's treating it like a spar, maybe. Mm. Maybe that's part of what Murray has to fire him up. Maybe he's going to find a way to fire him up. Well, I think he'd find out if he, if he gets hurt, but he might go along and learn as much as he can from this guy. Yeah, could be. Pradeep Singh in the red pants. Titles Factory. Great prospect. One of the best prospects in Australia at the moment. Against the very experienced... Oh, look at the shots there. Yeah, bang, bang, bang. Good. Bang again. The stillness of back comes back. Come back for more. He's back for more. Good shots again. Good jabs yeah. from Rizit Singh. I'd like to see him again. I say it again. Rip that left hand in there under that guy's right elbow. I think a left hook would finish this. Because after he hits him with the right cross, his head is still high. That's right. And his hands are down. Yeah. And he, he's exposed. He's exposed. We'd hit him with a good left hook in there. He's got him going. I yeah. Think. Oh, good shots again from right Singh. Hand. To the back in the black. He's really on the back. In fact, he's on his heels nearly, really. Yeah. But you've got to give him the big C for courage. That's true. You, you have to. What's happened here? There's a welcome break. A loose uh, shoelace. A loose shoelace. Well, I think Harback will tell you, he's bleeding. His nose is bleed. Yeah. Fairly bad bleed, too. No, you can't. You can't. No, he can't do it. Come on, Chris. You know the rules. You can't do it. Tying up his shoelace. He's uh, Pradeep Singh's in the corner. I remember years ago, they'd make you do it yourself, even with yeah. gloves on. Come on. Now they're going to do it. No, they oh. can't do it. Oh. They can't do it. So we're back with a flood nose. The crowd are saying, finish him off. Maybe that's the, how much the crowd think he's that far ahead. Oh. Both threw good bombs there. Yeah. And that was a bit awkward there for Pradeep Singh. He didn't expect it. He left himself exposed, but he threw his That's big it. one. Good shots again from Singh. Oh, oh and yes. Again. Now, there's a limit to what they're going to allow this guy to yeah. take. There's a limit. Oh, come on, Chris. The guy turned. Now, there's something. If a fighter turns when a punch is coming at you and the punch lands in the foul area, yeah. it's not your fault. Oh, big, big shots there from... Oh, come on, Chris. Bang, referee, bang. He's got to watch this very carefully. Oh, these are big shots when anybody's standing. Pradeep Singh up, down, over the top. Any way you want, he's laying them. Bang. Bang. There's nothing there. He's hurt. He's very hurt. Up above the top of the position. And the bell. The bell saves. No, the doctor's saying stop the fight. That's the end of it. The yep. doc All right. The doctor's saying stop the enough. fight. Is that unusual, Gus? The doctor is stopping the fight. But see, now the doctor can use his red card to say, I want this fight stopped. Well, good and idea. That, and that's what he can do. And that's what he did. I'm glad he did it. Because I think he did the right thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I just want to, you know, because he was saved by the bell, but another round would have been severe punishment. Yes, uh... He was taking too much punishment, yeah. And I'm glad that the doctor did that. I would have preferred the referee did it. Yeah, I thought, so. I thought so. In fact, I preferred the corner would do it, but the corners don't do it because the corners yeah. are tougher than their fighters. That's right. But I would have preferred the referee to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, referee Chris Anderson acting on the advice of our ringside physician, Dr. John Jury.
stop the contest. Two minutes, 40 seconds into the fifth round. Retaining his PABA middleweight championship, the Aussie warrior, Pradeep Singh. Let's hear it for our Czechoslovakia, our gallant fighter from the Republic of Czechoslovakia, Radek Prabek. Sam Sullivan congratulating Prabek. Sam Sullivan, Paul Murdoch. Give Radek a big round of applause, he's yelling, maybe a broken nose, all those injuries. How about three cheers for Brad Hip hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Brad Hip, congratulations again, eight out of eight ain't bad and uh, we call you Aussie Brad Hip now. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you my, my coach, Mr. Mike Thompson. And thanks, my coach Brian, and all of you very sporty people. I got lots of heart from you. <laughs> you are just great, all Australian. <laughs> Murray come across. We saw some tremendous new moves, combination punching. Uh, new style tonight, he, he boxed beautifully. Yeah, he, box, he boxes good when I come to him. Like uh, when, he, when he got in close and, and tried to mix it, they flashed in and it wasn't great. But when he's on the outside, just picking him up, and when they come to him, they're all produced. Uh, thanks everybody for coming, it's a fantastic crowd. Hope you're enjoying the night. I, I hope everyone gets behind Pradeep. He's only 19, he's 8 0 now, he's 6 knockouts, and uh, he's gonna go a long way. Thanks for coming. Of the Francis family and the Lord of God. I just wish everybody the best, and especially who I'm looking at. The Fighters Factory. They're always here. They brought boxing, boxing back to us. And always will be. And always will be there. And thank you, Brian and Murray too, and the Boxing Factory. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff Butler. Brian, you have a very special presentation to make. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to present this um, uh, plaque here to, um, to Neville Roberts here. Uh, Neville's been a long time supporter um, of boxing with Dave Cruz. Um, he's Dave's right hand man at Knox Tavern. And Dave uh, doesn't always get out in the spotlight. And um, Neville's always here to help us out. And um, I'd just like to say thanks. Welcome back, Neville. And thanks for all your support. And thanks to Dave and KT for your long time support of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, Murray Thompson on last Monday put me on to a lovely lady, Rad Frank, who suggested, not suggested, but said, had we had a tribute. As we do in boxing, we don't ask you to stand for a minute or for two minutes like they do in other venues. We gong the bell ten times. It's the way of saying God bless and thank boxer, kickboxer, trainer, manager, fighter, whatever you like. We thank them for their great life and for their contribution to boxing. Bill Earl was a Port Melbourne boy. His interest in boxing began in the 1920s. When as a teenager, he and his brother, Reg the Ox, discovered Papa Johnson's Gymnasium. The L boys, handy with their fists and good hoofers, took the manly art of self-defense, like ducks to water, beautiful copy. Turning professional during depression, initially to put food on the table, Bill L was the James J. Braddock of Victorian boxing. Fighting under the name of Billy Ray. Not Johnny Ray, but Billy Ray is a welterweight. 
What an impressive record he had. 54 bouts, 52 wins. Continuing his pugilism when he enlisted in the Army, he later was in the Air Force and went on to win the Northern Territory Welterweight Championship in 1943. Bill's love of boxing led him to the gymnasium after military service and he began training in the 1940s for something to do. That something saw Bill offering the next 50 or so years to the sport, 50 years in boxing. Bill was a family man, a man's man and a top bloke. He was a person you could rely on, his word was concrete. Men like Bill Earl are the men who fought and loved boxing and they gained respect. They garnered respect. It's out of respect tonight that Rad Frank, Terry Earl, Shannon Graham Rank ask you to respect Bill Earl, who died in 2004, 28th of June, 91 years young. What a grand it is. Damien Memory, would you toll the bell 10 times? Bill Earl, we pay tribute. Thank you, Damien. May God rest his soul. Thank you. Stephen Marks on the scales. 63.2. 63.2. He made his pro debut in Victoria way back at Ballarat. Would you welcome uh, Mick Shaw? Welcome to Dorset Gardens, Stephen. Uh, weighing in tonight, uh, back to, to uh, take your Australian Light World Away title back off Mick Shaw, we hope. Yeah, that's the idea, mate. Um, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the uh, competition tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be a good show, mate. A real good show. Okay. Yeah, we hope. Any predictions, Stephen? Oh, I think you might find that Mick might be out of his league tomorrow night. Uh, he's a great bloke. He's a real nice guy. But um, I think I think uh, it'll be shame to be out of his league. You want your title back, mate? I do, mate. I do. I do. All right. Well done. Congratulations and good luck, Stephen. Thanks, buddy. Good on you. Firstly, uh, welcome Mick Shaw uh, to Victoria. Uh, back here to defend your Australian title. You had your first pro fight here in in Victoria. Yeah, mate. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been down here fighting, but it's always great to come back to this um, sports-loving state. Love it. Great. Right. Happy to have you here. Uh, tomorrow night, you defend your Australian light world away title. Uh, that you won off Johnny Cottrell um, uh, against two-time former champion uh, Stephen Marks. How do you see that fight going tomorrow? Mate, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be one for the uh, the ages, I think. It's going to be a, a brawl, it's going to be hard, and it's going to be tough, and I think whoever's going to be there at the end is going to be the winner. OK. Well, congratulations on making the weight, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Good on you. Miss Emma Cutler, would you please return to scenery? Shane 
Delaney, Robbie Clark, big boxing and boxing champions here tonight. Stephen Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the National Anthem of Australia, Advanced Australia Fair, Emma Cutler. Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, welcome you to our main event, the Brawl for It All. Ten rounds of boxing for the Australian Super Lightweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, at Fort Knox on a Friday night, a bubbling night of heat in Centenary, February 24, 2006, Fighters Factory, main event. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first the challenger on my right, Occupying the blue corner with Dave the Rock Hitchcock and Sam King Solomon in his corner. From Shenside Park, the challenger. He is a twice holder of the Super Lightweight Championship of Australia. In 1999, he captured it here. In 2001, he captured it here at Fort Knox. He tipped the scales at 63.20 kilograms. 24 professional fights. 12 wins, 2 draws, 6 big wins coming by way of knockout. Wearing Tigers, Richmond colours of black and gold. The challenger, the macho man, Stephen Mark. 
last supporter all the way from Toowoomba, Queensland in the blue corner with coach mentor Glenn Azar. He turned professional in 1994, surprisingly at Ballarat, Victoria. At 29 years of age, he won the championship last March from Brad Hemming. He defended it successfully against Brad Hemming, therefore tonight making the second defence of his national crown at 63.20 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, 29 fights, 21 wins, one draw, seven losses, six by, win by knockout. The reigning and defending champion, Mick Shaw. Your referee, Malcolm Mulder. Here we go, let's get it on. Oh, this will be a hell of a battle. Oh, this is a big one. This is the bro for that old Gus. Both they want it very badly. Now, Steven's been national champion twice. He knows what's there. He wants it. Keep it. Shaw's a very tough kid. They both had about the same number of fights. 29 in uh, Shaw's case and 24 in uh, Stephen Mark's case. So equal up there. Here we go. That's First of 10 threes. With Stephen Mark, to see the kill or be killed. Yes, that's true. Stephen Marks has got tremendous experience. He's fought in the Philippines, Japan a couple of times, Jakarta, New Caledonia, New Zealand. He's fought all over the place. Well, he's picked up a lot of tricks of the trade. He's got David Hedgecock in his corner, so here we go. Round one of the uh, 10 three minutes, three in super lightweight title fight. Steve. Yes, he knows his way around in there, and uh, be interesting to see what happens here. It's Mick Shaw from, uh, from Queensland, the champion. Coming down here to defend him, Stephen Mark's hometown. Stephen went in with two very quick jabs there. Mick Shaw's got his eyes wide open. Yeah. See the, wide open, yeah. watching every. Considering how that little girl was fighting before closing her eyes, it was yeah. a punch game. <laughs> Good counter punching, yeah. buddy. Stephen Mark just a little bit out of distance, but yeah. he's early on in the fight. Yes, he's got to get. Um, He's got to settle down a little bit. Yeah. He's got 10 rounds to go. It's a championship fight. He's got to control himself, do his thinking, control the emotions. They're just lacking a bit of distance, but it's early doors yet. Stephen Marks, the black and gold trunks. He's a challenger. And Mick Shaw, the champion in the black and white for Queensland. He's more of a counterpuncher, isn't he, yeah. uh, Mick Shaw? Appears to be a counterpuncher. He countered well with, well with the right hand there, too. Yeah. Pulled the Mark Stephen just, Marks up a bit. He just had a good stare at him. I think Stephen likes to mix it a bit. Counterpunching very well there. Well, he's getting frustrated now, Marks, because he can't land. But the sadly doors yet, Stephen. Take your time. Let's do slow down. Ten three-minute rounds for the Australian super lightweight title here at Knox. The 33rd promotion for the Fighters Factory is Murray Thompson. Yes, 33rd sellout too by Gully. Yeah. The place is packed to the rafters. Stephen Mark's still finding his distance. Yeah, they're feeling out round for both fighters. They ain't got to show too much to each other. That's good, Marks is making them miss. He's got that evil stare, Stephen Marks, isn't yes, he? Yes, he has. He's up for the prize tonight. Yes, he is. He's up. Well, it's a championship, Gus, isn't it? Yes, you know? it is. And they're, they're sussing each other out. And i tell you what, they're pretty evenly matched, old buddy. Yeah, they are. They're very similar type fighters. You know, good boxers. They wanna, neither one has landed a talent blow yet, but... The indications are there that it's going to be happening soon. Yeah, we're probably seeing the the thirst for action take over in that second round. I couldn't separate them, yeah. mate. As I said, it's a good feeling that round, and uh, normally that tells you that there's something coming. Yeah. A bit of a whiff coming up later on. Yeah. So I don't like to give even rounds because I feel that when you're a judge, you're supposed to be judging. But yeah. still, in all, an even round is a possible. So well, I mean, I mean, if it has to be, it has to be. 
Well, they're both, they're both made each other miss as many times as they did, so I mean, that gives you the indication of where they was landing, you know. So David Hedgecock will be, um, he's sort of taking over the training now, Stephen Martin. Yeah, and, and, yeah. You know, David trains as Sam Solomon, and he's a tough type of guy, David, you know what I mean? He'll, he'll demand the, the, the most from his fighters. He most certainly does. Ably assisted by Sam Solomon in the corner and Keith Ellis Sr. I see there as well. So there's an array of talent in that corner behind the scenes. Round two for the super lightweight title. 10 three minute rounds. Stephen Marks coming from the blue corner and the black and gold against the champion Mick Shaw from the red corner and the black and white. White boots. Evenly matched as Gus Mercurio said. Either one got to land a blow yet. Yeah, the counter punch is way. Yeah, oh, good shots here from Marks. Oh, 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 oh. wow! The counter punch waited and caught him. Yeah, and caught him. The counter punch waited and caught him. Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't uh, spell good for Stephen Marks. It's early in the second round. The only thing is about a counter puncher, he, he doesn't attack that much then. No. Mick Shaw's looking for openness now because he knows that you know Stephen's head won't be too clear. That's right. Plus the fact he knows he can hurt him. That gives a fighter tremendous confidence. That. I mean this Stephen Marks still got that steely chin that he had. Well he's been in some wars mate. He's boxed all over the world. He's had some bad luck in overseas countries. He's got stopped five times in, in six outings overseas. So um, his last fight was for a WBF title in the Philippines that he lost by a KO. So he's had some tough fights. Yeah. And how long is a piece of string? It's, uh, you know? It sometimes takes his toll. I like Stephen. He's a lovely boy. He's um, polite. Uh, he is a tremendous boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Tell you what, his chin is not that good anymore, man. No. No, that was not a real hard punch. No, sirree, his chin is not that good anymore. Well, as I said before, the punch that knocks you out is the same punch you shook your head at, you know. Oh, I, I, this isn't going to go. This isn't going to go. This is not going to go. Malcolm's going to stop it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go. That's the end of it. No, he just no, has a push. No, nothing. One more knockdown to the end of it. Regardless of what it... See, the guy that's on shaky legs like that, he's already hurt. Right. So whatever punch is coming through that hurt him, compound the early damage and that's yeah. where the danger comes in i'll tell you what that's gonna be a 7-10 round man eh? uh, they got the uh, smacked around over there and you have to keep looking the, the, the doctor's in the ring yeah and he's gonna say is this got worthwhile going on because yeah i don't know i don't like a chance i think i'd be, be very careful the kid is not taking punches well um, I'm going to leave you shortly because I'm, I'm going to give the trophy out for this one. So it's been nice working with you again, Shocker. And yes. when I leave you, it'll be just as this fight finishes. The doctor's very, very careful looking what's going on in there. I think the doctor will make a decision very quickly, even if he lets this fight go on. He might say, watch that first punch. Yeah. He's, he's down three points, and it's only two rounds. Yeah. No, it's not a good sign, is it? I mean, in his face, he looks a bit shot too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't look like you know he's got, and he's angry and hurt. You know, he's hurt. He's proud.